Welcome to the Mobic Microcast. What operators need to know. Welcome to the second Mobic Microcast. This time, we'll be delving into the hot topic of cloud gaming. Something that I truly believe will one day become a 5G killer application, not least because of the exponential growth in video traffic that it'll cause. Today, we'll be joined by analyst Gorkum Yeats from Analysis Mason. But before that, our main guest today is Stephen Armstrong, who is a journalist and writes for some high profile titles such as Wired. Stephen recently did an in-depth study on cloud gaming technologies and Google Stadia specifically. John Geary spoke to Stephen last week and started by asking him to do an introduction on this topic for us. So if you think of a, you know, uh, a multiplayer online role-playing game like World of Warcraft, your feeling is that you've got um, hundreds and hundreds of people playing this game with you. I mean, that isn't true. What those games are is their sleight of hand, their tricks. The, the servers literally can't handle many more than 100, 150 people. So what they do is they, they box people off into these little sections and you're playing in a very, very small uh, number of people available in your community. What cloud gaming offers, in theory, is that with a, with a properly equipped vast cloud network, you could connect the whole world to one game. Wow. You could connect millions of people to one game. It's kind of like the stadium that has no capacity limit, correct? You yes, know? that's right. And and one of the things that in particular that Google is looking at with Stadia is the, because they own YouTube, what they have, uh, I think, very smartly deduced, because the number of hours that people spend on YouTube watching other people game is huge. One of the features is you can click through. I'm watching you game. I'm watching you do, you know, Minecraft or I don't think Minecraft. I think it's a one-player game. Anyway, I'm watching you in World of Warcraft play, and I decide to come in and fight you. I just click on the YouTube feed, and I'm in your game. So it, the, you know, in a sense, it's a stadium where even the people hanging around outside the stadium can wind up on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. When you talk to these folks and they think of mobility, just the whole way mobility works, you could be on the move. You could be switching from one device to the other. What's, what, what sense did you get out of uh, the likes of Google? I mean, in many ways, that's their USP. Uh, what they're saying is that you can be yeah. playing Assassin's Creed and you can then have to go to work, go catch the bus. <laughs> you can just basically flip it onto your phone and walk out the door, still playing exactly the same game at exactly the same point as you were. And then you can flip that onto your tablet. You can flip it back onto your workplace uh, la uh, laptop. And then you can work all day pretending that you're working, but actually just playing the game. There's literally, in theory, Absolutely no device that couldn't just accept wow. the game as it jumps yeah. up. I think we just I mean, five G. Obviously, this is purely five G. Under four yeah. G, yeah. Stadia has literally no chance of working whatsoever. So five G is the best possible bet. By the way, you should quickly uh, um, trademark this. I think you just came up with the new service name, Flipper. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, yes. I would I, I, I test that one out. <laughs> but but in reality, is it is it. Um, just Google, certainly not. You know, there's Microsoft and others you talk to. Who are kind of the key players, and, and what do you think are the, the things that are going to matter when they succeed here beyond just um, you know having good games? What else do they got to take into account? Well, I mean, actually, beyond good games is a very simple statement, but actually, that's incredibly important. If you think yeah. about the what we really have in the world up until this point is three <laughs> game console providers. We have Nintendo. We have Sony with PlayStation, we have Microsoft with Xbox. Now, hmm. for cloud gaming, you need to be an operator who has access to a huge number of server farms all around the world. And Nintendo and Sony are not in that game. They are not yeah. able to build that infrastructure. Really, the only two operators are Stadia, the newcomer, and Microsoft, the old hand, the ones who know what's what. Yep. Interestingly, Sony have signed up with Microsoft and they're working together. Um, it may end up being the case that Microsoft's uh, cloud becomes the de facto alternative to Stadia with Sony and possibly even with Nintendo. Um, the other thing is that uh, services like Netflix, for instance, uh, they are very concerned about cloud gaming. At one point, the, um, in a recent set of results, the, uh, Ted Sarandos said, you know, our biggest, we lose more hours of viewing to Minecraft than we do to HBO. Wow. So, wow. yeah, they're all looking yeah, to yeah. work out how that works and what they yeah. can do about that. Stadia's problem, it has two big problems. The first problem is something they call latency. Latency is the amount of time it takes the signal to travel back and forth. Now, if you're watching Netflix, you have uh, something called a codec. 
which is a system which encodes and decodes right. uh, the data. So, it, right. and the, the wheel of death or the slowing down of your computer is when the codec isn't working fast enough. Right. And what Netflix has to do, or indeed any other, other streaming services are available, um, is they send you the video of the next few seconds so that you're always delayed. The, the, the data is arriving six, seven, eight, ten seconds ahead of your view. Yeah. With games, that's impossible. Yeah. Because what you do with the video will change the video in real time. So there's no way of anticipating or predicting your actions. They can't send you the information before you do what you're doing. So they have to have, it, in effect, instant real time encoding and decoding of the data stream. Now that is possible. Uh, Google have uh, released a new codec which uh, allows that, but it tends to allow that only at extremely <laughs> high speeds with server farms that are very, very close to the right. gamers. If you were to um, try to play Stadia some distance from a server farm, if you were to only have a fairly basic broadband, the latency would be a problem. You would you'd take an action and it would take a while yeah. for the game to respond. Yeah. And when your competition like Nintendo and Sony are doing instantaneous, or your mobile provider with Candy Crush or whatever, they're doing instantaneous responses, that makes it an unattractive proposition. There's a minimum sort of bit rate that you need to use Stadia. And I was talking to a guy who runs a gaming magazine based out of Berlin, and he says, you know, they, you need about 20, uh, 526 BPS upload, which is the kind of speed that we're using right yeah. now to have this conversation. Yeah. He was saying in Berlin, he was having trouble getting at home. He was having trouble getting much more than six or 10. So he was his latency in, in a major, you know, European capital city. He was just not getting the speed. He said it's fine in Silicon Valley itself. It's fine if you're on the Google <laughs> yeah. campus, but you know, not so much in a small British regional town. Well, I'm right just down the street from the Google campus, and I'm not getting that either. So you, <laughs> um, they do have a tendency to drop ideas if they're not working. If you look at the list of Google patents that they've uh, run for a while, you know, Google yeah. Glass, for instance, a really obvious one, um, disappeared overnight. No one talks yeah. about it anymore. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like it's a big deal. It feels like it is the future. And it's also something that Microsoft is working towards. It's working towards its own iCloud uh, gaming platform. Right. So it is the future in some way. What you'll probably find is that particularly Google, maybe also Microsoft, will probably become almost like uh, a cable operator. They will be the people whose servers carry the games. Uh, but they won't necessarily be, because the very, the very literal nature of Stadia is that you don't even have a Stadia console. You just have any remote control to make it work, any gaming control. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. you, can, you can Bluetooth connect to your phone so you can play properly um, using your phone or your tablet. At that point, there's no brand loyalty particularly to Stadia. What you're doing is you're following the games. And it'll be much more like thinking about your television, that <clears throat> Google will provide your Samsung television. Uh, the programs will be provided by Netflix, but all you'll care about is you're watching Stranger Things, and that's yeah. the conversation. Um, so I guess as we wrap up, tell me, is there anything else you'd like uh, our viewers to, to be aware of? Because I think this was very insightful and thoughtful as you start to think about planning for when gaming is really fully ubiquitous. Yeah, I mean, your, your viewers, the mobile uh, providers and the mobile operators, these are the people who really effectively produced the last great innovation in gaming, which was when mobile gaming became a serious thing. Since then, there's been no major innovation in the video game industry. There are certain iterations over time. You know, you think of going back to Space Invaders, then you get to the consoles and so forth. There yeah. are always these big jumps, but there hasn't been a jump since then. The, the dream of uh, Stadia, the dream of cloud gaming, relies on fast speeds and it relies on mobile operators. Because what's the point of having a system which can jump from your TV to your computer if they're in the same room? It yeah. only works as a dream if you can take it out of the house on your mobile, take it out of the house on the tablet. So yeah. whilst Google may be talking about the, the latency of its broadband and its server farms, that's going to be a quarter of the needs that they have. They need to have 5G latency speeds of zero, essentially. And that, that's what makes this work. Without that, I don't think it works. Thank you so much. much. I found this really interesting and I really appreciate it. And for those of you who haven't read the article, it's in Wired Magazine, well worth the read. And uh, I'm looking Please. forward to seeing you again, Stephen. Gorkum, that was a very engaging discussion between uh, Stephen and John. One of the use cases that uh, really caught my uh, attention was the flipping use case, as you have uh, people transition from the home environment to the external environment across uh, multiple devices and trying to hold that session continuous across those uh, devices. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I agree with Stephen. Um, the mobility aspect of cloud gaming is very interesting, right? So, to any time, any device, any place, access to gaming is a powerful proposition, and will surely rely on um, the wireless network technologies. So, for example, today, you know, you can switch between screens and devices in Google Stadia. You just pause your game in your TV or computer and uh, the gaming server just preserves the game session and then you just pick it up in another device in your smartphone uh, for example so this is a pretty smooth experience you know if all these devices are in the same network and you are in google's ecosystem but there are some scenarios right so for example if you're already gaming on your smartphone and on the wi-fi and you leave your home um, the wi-fi signal drops you switch to 4g network things don't really work well. And I actually tested it today with my cloud gaming service and it, it didn't really work, right? So I had to reconnect all over again and it wasn't really the smooth and the transparent transition that, that I was expecting. One other aspect of, of this transition is the video resolution. As you said, uh, there'll be multiple devices involved. And if you started off at your home on a PC, you could get, 4K video for your cloud gaming, but when you move out and you transition to your smartphone, you may need to only have 480p or 720p video for that same uh, game. And somebody will have to uh, dynamically make this switch of, of resolutions. The next thing I wanted to just uh, pick your brains on, um, Gorkum, was uh, this idea of quality of experience for cloud gamers. As you said, you know, you're, you're, you're a you're a gamer. What do you think will drive that quality of experience for uh, the mobile uh, cloud gamers? Sure. I mean, first of all, gamers hate lag, right? So this is one of the top quality of experience requirements, right? And I'm saying it as, as a you know as a gamer. So for a reasonable cloud gaming experience, um, you know, the latency needs to be maximum around 80 to 100 milliseconds, right? But to be honest, um, for hardcore gamers or for for multiplayer games. This may not even be good enough, right? So we are talking about lower level, level of latencies, like 20 milliseconds or 10 milliseconds, or even sub 10 milliseconds, right? Because any competitive advantage, you know, we can gain by lowering the latency is going to be appreciated by, by, by the gamers. And of course, you can't get these kind of latencies in, in the 4G network, so you need, you need the 5G network to do this. And of course, you know, when we are talking about latency and end-to-end -end latency um there are multiple factors affecting it right so um the encoding decoding rendering of the stream but you know there are already some solutions for that and and the cloud gaming providers are improving these aspects but on the network side right the, the transmission it might have the biggest and the most unpredictable impact on the end-to-end -end latency right so this can be due to um, the RAM congestion or the lack of bandwidth or, or packet loss, etc. Right? So many things can happen. So mobile operators, they really have a major role to play to make their um, 5G networks um, game ready. Right. So and, and, and on the top of the list is really to fully understand um, the cloud gaming traffic that is going over their network. And after they understand it, they can look at optimizing it, accelerating it, or um, prioritizing it, right, to, to be able to ensure um, the low latency levels that the gamers demand. Gorkum, is there anything else you would like to recommend uh, for the mobile operators as they think about rolling out cloud gaming over the coming months and years? Sure. Um, there are some new and exciting technologies that are coming up. For example, network slicing is, is, is one of them. You know, potentially you can dedicate a network slice to guarantee um, the quality of service and the latency of, of the cloud gaming services. And I actually saw um, some examples and trials of this in, in China, um, for example, and this can potentially be um, in other regions as well. And another one is, it's a very hot topic, it's the edge computing. And um, it definitely can help improve the cloud gaming experience, right? So, and we are already seeing some examples of um, using the edge uh, for for cloud uh, cloud gaming. Um, for example, a large multiplayer um, gaming platform is is, is using edge uh, to manage the, the latency in a, in a in a in a given session, and they are doing it to make sure that everyone has pretty much a similar latency. So it is really just leveling the, the playing field, so everyone gets you know the fairer. Um, gameplay. So obviously, you know, speaking of edge, it's really about the location of the cloud gaming servers, right? And it has a major impact on the latency and the 
and overall uh, quality of service. Yeah, th thank you, Gorkam. And in fact, uh, I'll, I'll let the audience know that we're going to dive into this in a separate microcast where we'll go into the details of cloud gaming with respect to Mobile Edge, and we'll have uh, AT&T join us for that discussion. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, make sure you, you register to get the detailed download for this microcast and hope to see you guys again next time. Thank you. Thank you.